Hey, stage two. Today for grammar, we're looking at direct and indirect speech. So let's look first at what, di uh, what direct speech is. So direct speech reports what someone has said or written by quoting their exact words using speech marks. Now, you might see this in books that you read, so your novels or your picture books. When a character is talking, it tells you exactly what that character said. That's direct speech. It uses speech marks and then you might have something like said Sally or yelled Mark or asked Roger afterwards to tell you that that's how the character said it. So let's look at an example. Okay, so in this sentence, I, it says, I'm really good at swimming, said Susie. So what we need to put here, so this is what Susie said exactly. So we need to put in speech marks. So speech marks look like this. They're like little C's that go above um, the, what the characters said. So this one here is called an open speech mark and it goes right before the first word the character says. And this one is called a closing speech mark and it goes right after the final thing that the character has said. So let's pop in the open, the, yeah, the open speech mark first. So what is the first? So we know Susie is the character that is speaking. So let's put in the speech mark where she first starts speaking. All right, so we have... I am really good at swimming. So I is the first word that she says. So our opening speech mark is going to be put there. And now the final thing that she says is swimming. So she's saying the sentence, I am really good at swimming. So swimming is her final word. So my closing speech marks will go after her final word. So I can now see that Susie has said, the sentence that is inside the speech marks. I am really good at swimming. Now there's something else that's missing from this sentence though. When a character is speaking, we always put a comma, a question mark or an exclamation mark between the spoken and the unspoken word. So the final spoken word is swimming and the unspoken word is said. So what I'm going to do, because Susie hasn't asked a question and she hasn't said it with, um, she's said it. So she's not exclaiming it or yelling it or shouting it. So it doesn't need an exclamation mark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a comma. So the comma goes right after the final spoken word before the quotation mark. So you can see that my comma is between my spoken and unspoken word there. Okay, let's have a look at indirect speech. So indirect speech is when we report what someone has said or we retell what someone has said, although it's not word for word and it doesn't use speech marks because the person isn't saying it. I'm just retelling it how they said it to me or what they said to me. So if I was to retell what Susie said to somebody, maybe I'm going to tell my mum what Susie said. I might say, Okay, there. So I might go up to my mum and say, oh, mum, Susie said she's really good at swimming. So I don't need any speech marks because Susie is not saying it. It's not a direct quote from Susie. It's not a character speaking. I don't need my comma because there's no spoken and un unspoken word. They're all unspoken words. Okay, so let's have a look at your task today. 
So in Teams, you'll have a sheet, a worksheet that says Tuesday grammar. And then at the top, it should say direct and indirect speech. So it says direct speech uses quotation marks or speech marks to show the exact words somebody said. For example, Molly said, and you can see the comma there, I want to swim two more laps. And the indirect speech says, sorry, the indirect speech tells what someone said without using quotation marks. For example, Molly said she wanted to swim two more laps. So it's retelling what Molly said without Molly actually saying it. So just want to draw your attention here on this page. In, in the direct speech example, Molly said is coming before the sentence. So you can see that that comma is still in between the unspoken and spoken word. If it was, I want to swim two more laps, Molly said, the comma would be after the word laps. Okay. So in question number one, you're going to tick the sentences that use direct speech. Now, if you were listening and paying attention, there's a really good clue as to which one those are. Something that you can look for in the sentence. All right, number two, question number two is you're going to look at the direct speech sentences and you're going to rewrite them as indirect speech sentences. So the first one's been done as an, as an example for you. It's time to go home, dad said. If I was to say, so dad's actually saying that. He's saying it's time to go home. If I was to say that as in, indirect, dad not saying it himself, I might say, dad said it was time to go home. So you're going to do A, B, C and D. You're going to rewrite those speeches, those quotation marks, speech mark sentences um, as indirect speech. In number three, you're doing the opposite. So you're taking the indirect sentences, the indirect speech, and you're turning it into direct speech. Make sure you include those commas in the right spots. Have a look through the examples that are there for you, and you can have a look at where the commas or the exclamation mark or the question marks are put. But it is always between the unspoken and spoken words. I think actually these commas have already been done for you now that I'm looking at it. Yes, it says my sister said comma and then you're going to have what the sister said. Sam said comma. So it's already put them in there for you to separate the unspoken and spoken word. And number four, your last one is you're going to tick the sentences that have the correct punctuation. So Spoken words are separated from unspoken words by a comma, a question mark, or an exclamation mark inside the quotation marks. So you're going to read through those, and if it's got the correct comma, exclamation mark, or quotation mark, you'll give it a tick. If it's, if it's um, punctuated correctly, then you tick it off and say, yep, this is correct. If it's not, you could either give it a little cross or you might just leave that one blank with no ticks in it. All right, if you have, that's all for today. So if you have any questions, make sure that you um, put a little message out to your teachers on Teams so that they can help you through anything you get stuck with.